It was, um, oh, I've forgotten who it was now. I was going to say it's Roland Bar, but I'm not so sure. But, but one, uh, he had 120 events. One of them had 2,000, oh, it was, it was Mariah Woodworth Etta. When, when the Lord meeted, met her and said, why aren't you in my mission field? She said, God, I'm a woman. Like, that was news. And he said, well, why aren't you in my mission field? Well, God, this. Well, why aren't you in my mission? Well, because I don't understand the scriptures. And the Lord pointed to the wall, and there on the wall was, the Bible, was a Bible, imprinted in vision form on the wall. And she said the moment she looked at it, it was as if all the scriptures were burned inside her. I'm like that's and, and not just that all the cross references all the passages and the meaning I'm like come on God <laughs> I'm ready um, all I want for Christmas Lord <laughs> and 16 languages while you're at it you know you see you see what we have watered down the baptism in the spirit to be. Like I said last night, these guys are forerunners. Yeah. They're the pioneers. They're the ones that have broken through. But God's no respecter of people. Mm -hmm. yes. It's a divine gift. I, I wish it wasn't. I wish I could. we could all hold hands and I could take you all up there. And you could all raid heaven for what you need. But, but, you know, we're, we're wrestling for that. But that's the level. I'm not talking about the guys in Acts. I'm talking a hundred years ago that these people moved it. So uh, the Holy Spirit falls on, 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 on her in, in Miss Osman on, on December the 31st. Four days later, three days later, Parham's been away. He's, he's been visiting. He's come back to the prayer room. He opens the prayer room door. And there, sitting on the heads of every person in the room, are tongues of fire. The birth of the Holy Spirit. The Pentecostal outpouring. 1904, the Welsh Revival starts in Mariah Chapel, led by Evan Roberts. He's, he just seeks the Lord and seeks the Lord and, and revival's poured out. 1906, 1909, you've got the Azusa Street Revival starts. Will Parham, you see how all this is connected? Parham goes down to Houston, Texas, holds meetings, but segregation is, is, is still in America. This one-eyed black man can't go into the meetings, so he sits outside the building with his ear against the wall, listening to the speakers speaking for the whole duration of that thing and gets fired up. He's invited to, to I think it's Bonnie Ray Street in, 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 in Los Angeles and he goes there to be the pastor and, and to lead this church from somebody because Parham recommends him to go to Los Angeles and he goes there and he gets this church he, just, he has this really simple raw way of, 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 of handling meetings and, and he just seeks God and the Holy Spirit falls. Well one day he turns up at the church and they've changed the locks and he doesn't have a key. But he's the pastor. You know that's not a good day. When Jerry locks up here and he comes back tomorrow morning and finds all the locks changed and he's the pastor. You know that's kind of how it happened. They threw him out. And so he found an old livery stable and, and sets to having meetings there, puts wooden box crates on, on, on the floor and, and bent planks of wood across and that's their seats. This, he puts up a, 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 a platform and, and th this is what Seymour, Seymour would do. He leads the meeting and he gets down behind the altar and he just prays and he prays, Holy Spirit come, Holy Spirit come, Holy Spirit come, Holy Spirit come. We just seeking the Lord for the Holy Spirit. That was all he would do. And when the Holy Spirit would fall, God would have his way. And that was the Azusa Street Revival. Simple, one-eyed black man. Very poor education. 1908, John G. Lake starts his healing ministry in South Africa. And he goes off with this community of people. 
with seeking signs and wonders and everything else to happen. And he gets the Holy Spirit in there and all his funding is cut off from his sending church in America. They can't afford to live. They can't afford to eat. You know, there's, there's opposition to Holy Spirit moving. And, and that's the gift of, wait till we get the Spirit off. And they move, they move in all of this. And, and he, says, he says to his community, we're going to have to return home. We can't do this and, and, and anymore. We just all, there's no funding. And to a man, they all, every one of them said, we're not leaving. He buried half of them. The malnutrition and starvation and everything, because they got the Holy Spirit. And all the funding got, 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 did. So John G. Lakes starts this healing ministry. 1914, the Assemblies of God is launched in the USA. 1915, the Ealing Pentecostal Church is launched in the UK and Ireland. John G. Lake has now returned back home. He's gone to Dowie's meetings. He's been endued with the power. He starts healing rooms in Spokane, Washington, USA. And they have 100,000 medically documented healings. Not, not just testimonies, medically documented. Heidi Baker right now in Mozambique, Africa, has got something, has something like 50 plus medically documented cases of people being raised from the dead. She said there's loads more, we just don't have them documented. So we're only saying there's 54 that we can prove medically has happened. 1917, the Jerusalem, Jerusalem is liberated by the combined Australian and New Zealand cavalry. You know, I love that story. I mean, talk about where God, where there's unity, God commands the blessing. You have two nations, cavalries, army, working together for the liberation of Jerusalem. When Jerusalem is, is finally liberated, um, and, and, and uh, it, it's an, I've got to get this right, it's an Australian general leading a New Zealand, New Zealand troops. He, he rides up to the gates of Jerusalem, steps off his horse, and leads his horse and men through the gates of Jerusalem. And when, when the army that was conquered asked him why he did it, he said, there is only one king that ever rode into Jerusalem. And in honor of him, I walk in. Only Jesus. Amen. It's just, I mean, so that's one testimony. Okay. The second one I love is that an Australian, I think it was a New Zealand girl, woman, in the army back in those days, a New Zealand woman dressed in an Australian uniform raised the Star of David over Jerusalem for the first time. Everything's in there. Unity. Both, both sexes involved, the humility and humbleness to honour God amongst everything else and the favour that's been on them ever, ever since that, 1917. 1927, next one. Don't worry about him, he's just the pastor, he's allowed to destroy the building. 1927, Amy Simple McPherson launches the Four Square Church movement in Los Angeles. June the 11th, 1933, documented by Associated Press, okay, not Charisma magazine, Associated Press. William Brannan, his Baptist minister, is in the Ohio River. 4,000 people are on the banks of the river watching him baptize. There's no TV in that day, okay? There was something to do on a Sunday afternoon. He's baptizing in the, in the Ohio River. He's on the 17th person to be water baptized and 4,000 people with their natural eyes, not Christians, 4,000 people with their natural eyes, watch a ball of light come down out of heaven and speak to the man. third of the people run off in fear. I mean, this is before Steven Spielberg before everything, this is the days of silent movies, all this stuff. I mean, phew, light comes down, talks to the man, as you, as, 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 as 
John the Baptist forerun my first coming, so you will forerun my second coming. Speaking, there's a woman in a boat mocking Branham as he baptizes these people.